If you're anything like me, you watch videos on YouTube about watches. Well, you're here now watching this after all. In these videos, many of the people talking to you about watches make it sound like watch collecting is all roses. But there is a dark side to all of this, and I'm finally ready to come clean about it. Welcome to Addicted to Watches. Okay, that introduction might have been a bit dramatic. I'll talk a little about what I alluded to in the intro, but this video is mainly a state of the collection video. We'll be seeing some watches I've already made videos about, as well as quite a few that you haven't seen yet. So, what is the dark side of watch collecting? Well, there's probably a few if we're being honest, but for today, let's talk about one in particular. If you're interested in my thoughts on the other parts of the dark side, let me know and maybe I'll do a video talking a bit more about those. It's addictive. And I know what you're going to say, well of course it's in your name. But as we'll soon see, sometimes it might be a good idea to rein it in and learn to appreciate watches from afar without feeling the need to buy them. Pretty soon it becomes all you think about, it consumes your thoughts, you lose your job, your friends and soon you have nothing left. Nothing, of course, except a nice watch you can flex on Instagram. Having this channel with this name, I of course don't practice what I preach, and currently have a decently large collection. So sit back and enjoy the show as we take a peek at what I currently have in my collection, and at the end, I'll reveal my plans for the collection going forward. Now, there are quite a few to get through. Until this point, I haven't actually counted up how many I have exactly. So, this will be interesting for me too. While not in any particular order, I'll try to group them together by some characteristic. And first up, let's look at some quartz watches. There's a trend here that will continue throughout the rest of the collection. There's a lot of Seiko. In fact, my collection is almost completely Seiko. What can I say? I like the brand, their history, design language and ethos. Back to the watches though, we've got some chronographs. One from Orient with a fantastic brushed grey dial. That's one of their Neo 70s solar chronographs. Also there are two JDM Seiko chronos with some distinct similarities but different colours and finishes. One with a rose gold and grey combo and the other black and gold with a brushed bezel. These are surprisingly affordable and feature Seiko's Mecha Quartz movement. Moving on from those, we come to a Black Flightmaster. I previously had the blue version as well, but have sold that. This black one is busy, but a lot of fun to wear. Continuing our Seiko theme, there is an interesting little perpetual calendar watch with an 8F movement inside on an integrated bracelet, as well as two radio wave solar watches, both in titanium. The blue one here is from the same model family as my SAGZ083, which I've unfortunately sold. The finishing on these, and especially the clarity of the crystals, really elevates the watches and makes them feel much more expensive than they are. Finally in this group are two Casio digital watches. One is the G-Shock that everyone needs in their collection, the 5600, and the other is a cool little world time that I think doesn't get enough love here on YouTube. Okay, that was quite a few, but we've got a long way to go. Now onto some mechanicals, and again, a lot of Seiko on the table. We've got three Seiko 5 watches, and two with grey sunburst dials. The SNXS079 has been around for a long time, whereas the Dress KX is a more recent addition. Between those is a white-faced older model that looks a bit like the recent IWC on Genor. Two of those watches contain 7S26 movements inside, but there's another one of those on the table too. This little number is an SKX031, also known as the Seiko Submariner for obvious reasons. It's a nice, comfortable size and has just the right amount of wear on it to feel loved, but not too well loved. There's another diver on the table, a Samurai Great White Save the Ocean edition. I really love the wave texture on this dial. Okay, that's all the Seiko out of the way for now. Also on the table is an Orient Chicane, still wrapped up. These Chicane watches are hard to come by so I haven't brought myself to unwrap it and wear it just yet. Who knows if I ever will. Also on the table is this gorgeous little vintage citizen watch. 
my only citizen in the collection. It's a manual wind watch that still keeps surprisingly good time, and that champagne sunburst dial is just awesome. We've also got two San Martin watches here, both evidence of my quest for the perfect Black Bay 36 style watch. That black one in the Ranger style case is the current leader, and a video on that quiet release from San Martin is coming soon. Finally, we have a build I did a while ago in a simple pilot's watch style. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Of course, I'm saving my favourites for last, and if you've watched my videos, you'll know some of what's coming. For now, we move on to a group of generally everyday slash slightly dressy watches. First up is my Blue Baby Alpinist, which is a bit less dressy and more fieldy, but the polishing on the case and bezel brings it back a little. It's a fantastic watch and could make a case as a one watch collection to be honest. Also in this group are not just one but two Creedor Pacifique watches. I started with the Kinetic but came across a Quartz one and couldn't help myself. At the prices these come up available for sometimes, they are a steal at as low as 500 US dollars. Next up, a Quartz watch slipped through that first group and found its way here. This comes from the JDM Brights line, and I really like that B on the counterbalance. It's got a lot of things going for this watch, so expect a full video soon. There will be a few presage watches now, though also some more to come later too. Up first is the black SARY149, which is a great little watch, slightly below average case size and a very subtly textured dial. Then we've got the trio of interesting dial material presages. One is white enamel, one black urushi lacquer, and one milky white porcelain. These are all really beautiful dials that showcase Seiko's focus on traditional Japanese craftsmanship. Finally, we have two watches that are not part of the Presage collection, but if that line were around when these were made, they would be. First up is the Sarx 045 with a really rich, vibrant blue dial that has a classy vertical texture going on. And finally in this group is the Saab before it was the Saab. This is actually the first watch from Seiko to ever use that case. This is the SCVS001, with all the good looks of the later Saab, plus a champagne sunburst dial and gold accents. That's a lot of watches. In fact, we've looked at 29 already. What if I told you there are still 9 more to go? These are the ones I really like, so we'll take our time on these. First up is my green matcha presage. Seiko just know how to do textured dials on affordable watches. And we'll follow that up with not just one, but two Starlights. One is the international release, and the other the Japan only release. People say the Japanese release has a slightly richer blue dial. Can you see the difference? Those three are all limited edition releases, and there are a few more to go. But before that, here is a very interesting watch that hasn't really made the rounds yet. It's an Astron SBXY031. Now, normally Astron watches are big, beautiful, busy watches, but this one is decidedly small and understated by comparison, even with that radially textured dial. I think this one is a real sleeper, and I was very excited to get it. Back on to the limited editions, and there is a watch that caused a bit of buzz when it was released. It comes from a collaboration between Seiko and the Japanese brand Nano Universe. It bears a striking similarity to a vintage Rolex watch, but packs it into a 35mm case with a quartz movement. Only 300 of these were made, but the retail price was not particularly high when released, so they were quite popular. Following up that one is a brand new Blue Lagoon Turtle, with some of the original stickers still barely hanging on. When this limited edition was originally released, I was really drawn to that vibrant blue colour combination. Unfortunately, I was too late to the party and they'd all sold out. I came across this one still brand new and grabbed it. Like the Orient Chicane, I'm not sure if I'll be able to bring myself to peel off the stickers just yet. Okay, we're down to the last three watches now. Two of them, you might already know, but before those, there's this gorgeous Seiko Laurel with the higher end 4S15 movement. While not quite old enough to be called vintage, it's doing pretty well for itself considering it was made in 1996. I found this one in Japan, and when I bought it, the seller described the bracelet size as 14cm, so I was expecting to have to replace it, but when it arrived, I was pleasantly surprised to find it bigger than that, 
and perfectly sized for my wrist. Finally, we've got the heavy hitters in my collection. Two more limited edition textured dials. This time they come from Grand Seiko, with the brown dialed cookie that celebrates the 20th anniversary of the Ninus movement, and the Lake Sewer, which needs no introduction. These two are both incredible watches for a number of reasons, and ones I can't imagine myself ever getting rid of. They really showcase the levels of texture and dial finishing that Grand Seiko can achieve. Whew, it's a bit concerning when I get them all together and go through them. I think it's safe to say I'm addicted. Now, I said I'd also share my plans for the collection going forward. Those plans are... Swap them all for a Rolex. Just kidding. But, actually, even though these watches make up my collection, I will be moving most of them on. I have a core collection of closer to 6 or 8 watches that I intend to keep for the foreseeable future, but for all the others, I'll wear them and enjoy them for a little while before moving them on to replace and bring you more of that sweet, sweet content. You might also notice that there are quite a few watches from previous videos you haven't seen here. I've sold quite a few of those already. There will be a lot still to go on the chopping block, and I have to be ruthless because I really do like and enjoy wearing all of these watches. But if I do another one of these State of the Collection videos further down the track, don't be too surprised if the collection looks completely different. What do you think about these watches? Which one was your favourite? Is there anything you think I should add to my collection? Is yours bigger? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.